So V Rising has been a fairly frequently requested video by viewers of both this channel and the Let's Play channel, and thankfully I was able to finally get a hold of a press key and give it a run through. Overall, my impression is basically that it's Diablo style controls meets design philosophy of things like Rust or Valheim. Though, being early access, a lot of things can change, and things will be added and hopefully improved as time goes on. Starting out with the story, it's fairly basic, with humanity having pushed back vampires to the edge of existence, and you rising back up to return to your former power as a glorious blood-sucking beast of the night. Beyond that, you do get some context for key enemies and such, though for the most part the game heavily favors the gameplay aspects over the story aspects, especially considering if you choose to pursue it, there is a PvP aspect to the game as well, though as many of you know I tend to avoid that for the most part, but with the power selections and stuff like that, I'm sure a lot of people will have a lot of fun with it. Speaking of gameplay focus though, for the most part it's really solid. The controls are relatively tight, you have a fairly diverse set of skills to choose from between those learned from defeating what are known as V-Bloods as well as those obtained from upgrading your equipment or completing other objectives. And with these, you have a lot of flexibility to mix and match the skills you enjoy, whether that involves sticking with a theme or just going ham on a variety of skills, and you can change these on the fly so there isn't really a big problem with wanting to try out different skills as you go. And on top of the combat skills, you also get movement and stealth skills that let you change forms into stuff like a wolf or a rat, or quite a bit further in, even stuff like a bat that lets you fly over rough terrain. Now during the test, I tried out most of the weapon types, ranging from dual sickles, to swords, to spears, and even hammers, crossbows, axes, etc. And each of them, as you move up in item quality, come with a distinct set of skills that for the most part felt at home with their weapon type. Though it is worth noting that they only gain these skills as you make higher quality versions of them, so you're not going to be hurling your starting axe like a boomerang or doing ground pounds with the starting hammer, but you will get there eventually. But needless to say, the combat skills will be needed as you start doing later and later bosses who get more and more diverse skills and even more aggressive patterns, with some of the later ones feeling like they might be a bit too difficult for a player to solo outside of maybe a Blood Moon situation, which serves to help to boost your power a bit, though it could also just be that I'm still learning to get good at the game, and I've mostly just been using it as an excuse to chill with some friends and steal each other's horses while dodging the ever-deadly sunlight. And yes, this game does have the standard vampire rules. Sunlight burns, garlic saps you of your strength, and silver is also pretty dang painful. And like all sentient things, you don't like being burned alive either, or unalive in this case. You still need blood to survive, and you can even convert people to your cause through various means, even later keeping people in cages to serve as living blood banks if you need it, which is really handy because different living sippy cups can have different types of blood, which impact your abilities. For example, Beast Blood makes you run faster, while moderate level Brute Blood will let you attack faster and leech life with each attack, so choosing who you feed on and who you eventually keep in those cages is a pretty good thing to kind of think about. Obviously you have to keep these people alive, and your horse as well, but there is also a life essence needed to keep your castle alive since it's powered by the blood-fueled heart as well, so that's where a lot of the juggling of resources you're more familiar with in stuff like Valheim comes in. And it's also where a lot of the grind comes in, which on the default settings, the grind can be pretty flippin' high, only slightly more forgiving than the aforementioned Valheim. Though thankfully, the game lets you adjust the server's settings on creation, and you can set it from everything bordering on basically creative mode, all the way up to needing to spend hours to even get your resources to build a single wall. Though do take caution when creating a server, these modifiers cannot be changed, and your character cannot be transferred. So if if you make it too grindy and hate it later, you'll abandon your work. Or if you make it too easy, you'll get bored building whatever you want for free and have to start entirely from scratch for a different experience. Though the options here are super granular and really nice to see in a game like this. Now, in terms of graphics and sound, the game reads really well, and I have not had any like real problems with it outside of a little bit of a performance issue that has already gotten resolved. The enemy attacks are mostly fairly well projected, with only a couple feeling like cheap shots, and while the enemies don't stand out like sore thumbs, it's pretty easy to read them in the middle of a fight to adjust your strategies. And with a fixed map, you will start to find it even easier as you get used to how various places naturally look. 
The sound design in this regard is fairly good as well, since there's plenty of useful audio cues to keep you tuned in on what's going on, and even while streaming at reduced volume, I was able to use a decent amount of them to know what's going on around me with the enemy attacks and such. The last thing for this game, and probably the main spot to address outside of just more content in general because, you know, early access, is going to be accessibility and options. There's some things they did great, such as screen shake controls, motion blur, in-game voice chat options, custom controls, you name it. They have the core features down really solid, but there's some weirdly and conspicuously absent options that I would absolutely expect from a game at this level. The two I personally keep running into issues with are monitor affinity, which is basically the monitor the game decides to play on, which for me resets to being on my drawing tablet each time I restart my computer rather than on my primary monitor that, yes, is set as such in Windows settings. The other thing being constraining the mouse, it does not have an option for it, and there were several instances where I was fighting or moving and accidentally clicked two to three pixels outside the window and minimized everything at a crucial time, which, for anyone making an action RPG or RTS or any similarly mouse-driven game, you need the option to lock the mouse to the game, please. But really, there's not much for me to actually complain about with this game besides that. The grinding aspect is pretty high in the default settings, but you have a decent amount of control on that when setting up the game. Similarly, there's no way to advance time, so you'll spend a lot of time either shadow hopping or sat in your coffin waiting for the day to pass. But again, when setting up the server, you can control the amount of daytime hours. So it's really a thing where most of the problems I would have with a game like this can easily just be compensated for with in-game systems when you set up your world, which is a great thing. Now, as far as my long-term prospects with this game, personally, I see myself enjoying it more as a social game since while it's fun, and I will probably dick around with building a castle in pseudo-creative mode, I don't really have much drive to play it outside of chilling with folks and chatting while we subdue the blood bags of the world and make bad jokes about how slow John's horse is compared to ours. There isn't quite a driving motivator in the game itself for me, though that is 100% a me issue I think, since I'm very often looking at what game I want to play next rather than seeing how I can play a game for hundreds of hours and still find new things. Which is what this game kind of feels like it is going for with me. So if you found yourself looking forward to your next session of Valheim for example, and you enjoy isometric combat, then this game may very well be for you. And to round out the episode, I'd like to give a special thanks to the people who help cover some of the costs of making content through channel memberships, Patreon, and Twitch subs. And if you want something with a little more Diablo-style atmosphere but turn-based combat, check out the link to Hellslave on screen now.